This uh, will actually be our last Agile and Lean talk. Uh, in this one here, we want to, to look at three of the key aspects, the Agile Lean principles, that we're going to go out of our way to, to try to develop, to give you the opportunity to put into practice as part of this uh, module. And we'll talk about what they are and we'll also talk about why it is uh, we're doing that. So the, the first comment is that Agile isn't easy. And when I say Agile, I mean Agile and Lean. Any of these types of techniques, they're not easy. Uh, actually, they're quite difficult. And if you're comparing them, for example, to the waterfall model, the waterfall model in practice, even though it's a bit rubbish and generally won't give you good results, it's quite an easy approach to use. Agile and Lean approaches actually are considerably more difficult. And it's difficult from the perspective of the, the developer. Um, I'll tell you the reason why, but I, I don't mean, I, I, this, this is more in terms of, of the capability of the individual. Um, most Agile Lean developers love working in that way. And if you're a good Agile Lean developer, you want to do it any other way. But the reason I say it's difficult is for this reason. Agile Lean approaches, they are devolved project management techniques. They put a lot of responsibility on the individuals who are developing it. So it's up to the individuals to be able to understand and to make estimates about, well, how long will it take me to do this piece of functionality? It's up to individuals then to manage their own time towards doing that and to be able to deliver on these ones. Um, for a lot of new programmers, Agile and Lean is quite difficult because you are being asked to come up with estimates about how long you think it will take to implement this or to implement that. And short of actually having experience of trying a lot of these things, it's hard to come up with an accurate estimate. So a lot of people, when they first do their first sprint, they vastly overestimate how uh, much they can get done within that sprint. So it takes two, three, four sprints for four people understand roughly, but well, what can I realistically accomplish within a, for example, a two week window and get it done and get it done properly. So Agile to work and needs capable and specialist development team. You need people who are skilled. You can self-manage, communicate well, because communication is key, and make effective planning decisions that when you're estimating how long something's going to take, uh, you can do that accurately. With a centralized management system, quite often the, these types of decisions are taken out of the hands of the developer uh, and then are given to the manager. It doesn't make it any easier overall, in fact it probably makes it more difficult, but from the point of view of the developer, it's easier for them because they're losing some responsibilities. But we want to try to get you into a position where Agile and Lean is, is the development methodology that you can use. Uh, now, what does that mean? It means that within this module, uh, we're not going to try to do uh, a full agile development technique or a full lean development technique like Scrum. Um, in your third year modules, you will get to do this. In this particular module though, we are going to take a few of the underlying principles, the key principles that underpin lean and agile and focus on those. Um, reasonably simple ones, but focus on, on them and focus on doing them well. So it says so here, we will focus on iterative development and the creation of useful, high quality software. And if you think about everything that we said about Agile and Lean, these are the key things that underpin it. Uh, iterative development, we're going to be churning out software every two to three weeks that is going to work, it's going to be useful, it's going to give you marks and it's going to be of high quality. And if we can do that, and we'll practice doing that, these are the key fundamental skills that underpin basically all or any of the Agile and Lean techniques. The rest is all like, new and stuff about optimization and refinement. So we'll start off first of all, iterative development. Um, so we're gonna look at that, eat, sleep, code, and repeat. That's what I'm gonna hope everybody will be doing. Your project will sprint, uh, will be split into a number of sprints. Uh, generally, we'll use sort of three-week sprints. And for each of the sprints, I'm going to be asking you to plan out what it is you will do. So we're not looking for a huge amount of planning here. We're asking you for the next two weeks of development effort, two to three weeks, what you actually will 
be doing. I'm then going to ask you to commit to that. So when you're doing this, it's not a wish list. It is something that you genuinely will say, this is what I will accomplish within the next three weeks. Um, so I want you to decide to commit to doing that and then to make sure you put in the time and the effort to do it within the time period. I think for the first sprint, it can be painful because if there is going to be overestimation, it's likely to happen then. Second, third, fourth sprint, by the end of the module, you should be in a position where you can very much more accurately determine what it is you can accomplish within a, a for example, a two week window. The next bit within each of the sprints, we're going to look at, well, potentially shippable increments, um, PSIs. Um, so each sprint should result in a bit in a potentially shippable increment, something that the client would pay money for. Now, we have a problem here. There isn't real, well, I suppose I'm your client. I'm not giving you money, though. Um, I will, however, be assessing your projects and giving you marks. So the, the equivalent thing for us is, is that the end of each sprint, you should have produced some new software, some new code, designs, classes, functionality, that when you're mapping it against the marking scheme, it is capable of getting marks, and not just some, a lot of marks. So you want to have things with good algorithms, good design, extensibility, all of these things. Uh, so when we're talking about potentially shippable for us, what we mean is high quality code that will give you marks. And that, that's equivalent to the currency you're going to get out of this. There's a major, major benefit in doing this. It, and again, this doesn't only apply to this project, it applies to Agile Lean in general. It massively reduces risk. So if every two to three weeks you are creating software that is giving you marks, then you are massively reducing the risk in the project because you are incrementally increasing your marks week on week on week. And that's, a, uh, to be honest, it's a fantastic situation to be in because, again, in the real world, the client will feel happy that he or she can see the project evolving and functionality coming out of it. From your point of view, you'll be happy because you can see yourselves getting marks. You're building up the code base um, it removes a lot of the risk uh, from undertaking the, the project. Um, so I'm going to ask you to ensure that at the end of each of the sprint, this is not a wish list. When you do it, you commit to it. You look quite closely at the marking scheme. And at the end, you ensure that what you are submitting at the end of that sprint, you're comfortable, you're happy, will give you marks. Uh, so that's going to be our equivalent of, of being potentially shippable. Bullet proof is the last one uh, that we want to, to focus on. Uh, in terms of bullet proof code, now, uh, and again, this ties into the risk factor. Quite often, when somebody says it is done, done can mean different things. Uh, if, if, I, if you ask me to write an algorithm and a piece of functionality and I, I write it and I say, it's done, you might say, well, what does done actually mean? Uh, does it mean that I've implemented it? Does it mean I've fully tested it? Does it mean that it's been lovely documented? Does it mean that I've gone to the users and said to the user, are you happy with this? Are you willing to accept it? So, so done can mean different things, but all too often it simply means it's been implemented, not the full end-to-end um, -end, uh, testing and deployment has been accomplished. And it's such an issue that in a lot of the Agile approaches, they actually... Um, explicitly, as part of a project, ask for a definition of done to, to, to define what exactly done means. So when somebody says it is done, what do they mean by that to remove any uncertainty? Uh, most often, it's taken to mean ready to deploy to production. So it's the type of thing you are willing to give to your paying customer and to say, look, I've done it, I've tested it, I'm happy with it, there you go. It is done, done. Uh, so in this project here, uh, there will be temptation, I suppose, that at the end of each sprint, if, if, if you've got a number of things to do and you've got one and it's kind of done, it works a little bit, maybe you've never tested this or that bit hasn't been tidied up within the code, just to go on to the next thing. Don't do that. Uh, that might appeal, in fact it will appeal in the short term, It in the long term it is a suboptimal approach and considerably so. So I'm going to ask you when you're doing and introducing items of functionality, finish them off. Make sure you're happy with them. Make sure there's no bugs put in that. Uh, because the right time to finish it off, the right time to find and remove bugs is here and now. 
as opposed to several weeks down the line where the bugs will be more difficult to find, where the fact that some things are inconsistent are likely to result in other problems in other parts of your system. So we want to avoid uh, that too. Uh, system here, working software is the primary measure of progress, and it most certainly is. So overall for the project then, in terms of the Agile Lean principles that we are going to focus on, that I want you specifically to get good practice, and if you follow, that will maximize the mark you get in this module. So commit to delivering the great functionality within each sprint. To plan for two to three weeks out what you would do within those two to three weeks. And then to commit to doing it. To say, I will do this within those two to three weeks. Uh, to make sure that each sprint provides new game features that will attract marks. So not just do things at random, but to look at what counts. Um, you're talking about value. Value in your case is the marking scheme. Look at the marking scheme. Understand how, if you add a feature in, well, how will that feature contribute? How will it give you an example to show good design? How will it, um, what nice algorithms might it have? Things like that. Actively think about that to maximize your value. And the third item, let me get it up here, uh, is that to make sure that the items you're implementing within each sprint, do them properly, finish them off. Don't leave them hanging, don't leave them slightly shoddy. If you're gonna do it, do it properly. So at the end of each sprint, you have delivered on the things you were going to do. You're satisfied that they work fine, they're robust, and you know that they have given you a nice clump of, of marks. Um, it will require discipline, adhering to this. And it's the same thing with, with any sort of practice-based thing that if, if you can do it for two to three weeks, uh, maybe one or two sprints in this case, it'll be established behavior. It'll be a lot easier to carry it on, but it will require time and effort uh, at the start and discipline uh, across the whole team to bring this about. But if you do it, I, I can guarantee you, you will be maximizing uh, the number of marks you'll get uh, on the module.